Steve Alford, now let's dig into the latest, which is that UNM believes it is owed $1 million by the hot-to-trot coach of the now UCLA Bruins. That's where he is now. Alford's stunning departure last week came a day before his just-inked contract was to go into effect here at UNM. Now, neither Alfred nor Athletic Director Paul Krebs would opine on what was owed until the university sent a letter to Mr. Alfred demanding payment. Sour hoops, so to speak, Margaret. <laughs> or a legitimate demand because we've got some issue here about dates. Mm -hmm. Who said what and who signed what when? Who agreed to what when? And what is applicable? An agreement versus a contract. It's very interesting. Well, yeah. after some quick consultation with our resident legal expert. <laughs> um, well done. I mean, I would have to say that there there is definitely a gray area here mm -hmm. because there wasn't there was some sort of um, term sheet or I can't remember the exact term. You got it. Yeah. But um, and that that doesn't have the same kind of legal teeth mm -hmm. as a, as a firm contract. So it could be could be some contentiousness playing out but sure. but I, I mean UNM it could be some a case of sour hoops as you that's said that's right that's and they're right. just trying to get go after as much as a face saving Which. possibly move Sophie yeah. Martin okay, but so what, I interesting gotta say this. Please. I'm, I'm not an attorney I'm not going to pretend to play one on TV but someday <laughs> I will be and um, and um, I know that my my law professors will be pleased to hear me say that an offer a contract requires an offer and acceptance uh, consideration sort of a meeting of the minds and what we have in the term sheet it seems to me is uh, a set of conditions a dollar amount it 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 looks like it's pretty close to a contract to me I mean I, this would make a fabulous law school final exam um, what's what's interesting to me though is the statement terms are condition contingent upon our reaching an agreement on a final written employment agreement. So the, it contemplates a later contract. Right. That doesn't mean that this item itself isn't binding. It doesn't mean that, um, you know, that there wouldn't be more in a later contract. What I think is interesting, though, is that there, I do think there's going to be a battle here. UNM has no downside in saying, like, it's a, hundred, it's a million dollars. Right. It's a hundred million dollars because you sure. hurt our feelings, too. Mm -hmm. it's, a mil it's a million dollars. Of course, um, Offord is going to say, and, and UCLA likely will back him up that it's the 150. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I suspect either a lawsuit or a settlement somewhere down the road. Uh, somewhere in between. But, yeah, but to exactly. look at this, to look at this and say, is it a contract? Is it a not, not a contract? Mm -hmm. The real question is going to be, I think, probably what are they going to agree to later on? There's going to be a later agreement about that. Right, That's exactly my guess. Right. That's my guess. Exactly right. Rob, let me ask you a question here. It, it was such a jolt. It really was. I mean, here we, you, you think back, we had just missed going deep into tournament play. We had I mean, everything was at a sky-high place, and this just came and walloped people. What is the reaction here statewide, do you think? Are we going to see this, like, allegiance run down I-25 to Las Cruces, suddenly states the team of, you know, yeah, the no. Mexico State? Or, or does this ding this, the university it's a, somehow? It's a ding for the university okay. if the Lobos don't play very well next mm -hmm. year. Mm -hmm. If okay. they play very well next year, then the new coach, Craig Neal, will be hailed as a conquering hero and right. all will be forgiven. In college sports and in major sports, if you win, so much is forgiven. That's mm -hmm. right. Did you catch the LA Times column, sports column? Yes, T.J. Simers yes. ripped uh, <laughs> Mr. Alford one. And, um, but T.J.'s got a reputation for ripping lots of people. But there are a number of things in, uh, in, in Alford's past that kind of come to light in the last few days. Mm -hmm. and in fact, his, his time at Iowa, uh, there was the general, the, de the general, general consensus was UNM stole him. They, you know, they got a great coach from Iowa. But uh, in, during the course of the research for this program, I, I, I looked uh, up a number of stories, and we can talk about some of the problems that, uh, that Alford mm -hmm. had in, at Iowa. But there was one most interesting thing I, I saw was that when Bill Richardson was running for president, in 2008, he was in Iowa mm -hmm. for the Iowa caucus, mm -hmm. and he, according to something that, that, that I read, he was at a rally or at, at a meeting with about 25, 30 people in, in, in Iowa, and he said, oh, you know, we, we stole your coach, Steve Alford, and the crowd groaned, and they said, you can have him. Oh, interesting. Oh, dear. Now, what you're getting at here is, was news to me. I do not follow Steve Alford's career, Whitney, and I just had no idea that he had some serious allegations about a player of his at the time in mm -hmm. a sexual misconduct suit that he, Mr. Alfred, is alleged to have helped want to mm -hmm. steer aside the accuser and just really depress the situation. The student went on to be charged later for the same thing, so it did not look good for Mr. Alfred. So my question to you is, 
you know, it, it seems to me we, we got a good coach, we had some things happen, some stuff on the court, but it's a different atmosphere now with mm -hmm. Steubenville, with a lot of things that are out there in society. Should we look at his time here differently, knowing this information that happened at Iowa? Should we consider him in a different way? I, in New Mexico and at the University of New Mexico, I don't think so. I mean, I, you know, to me, the Lobos are going to play how they're going to play next year under a new coach. Um, I don't think this is in any way, shape, or form a black eye on the university. I think that we negotiated with him in good faith, that we, you know, wanted to have the best coach that we could for our team. I don't think there's any black black mark at all on, on the University of New Mexico. Um, the person who's going to have to really take a long, hard look at his decision is going to be Steve mm -hmm. Alford because right. uh, a perfect example of when, you know, you come to a kind of a smaller a smaller town, a smaller program, people aren't pulling it apart, they're not pulling you apart. It's a whole different level of competitiveness. Of now, welcome UCLA. Forget it. He's not going to have a moment's peace out there. What's amazing to me is that he knew that those things were out there. They'd never been reported when they were here. He breaks a contract in the manner that he did. You know, his team loses in the first round. Off he goes to UCLA. Did he not think that this stuff was going to come out? Right. So, I mean, watching this has been an incredible process. It's been a letdown just from a, you know, from the standpoint, from what I understand, when I talk to people in the community it's just this this knowledge that contracts really aren't intended to be anything other than to hold your feet to what was a verbal agreement it's okay. your word you said you were going to do this and then you put a contract in place to ensure that you don't break your word so okay. at the basis of this he broke his word and you can't do anything other than look at a, a, you know an eight or nine year old kid in the face and and know they get it the eight-year-olds get it so we can talk about the legal stuff they know that he broke his word so he's going to deal with it just to, just to clarify for the for the folks watching at home because I think I think the way you described it was a little unclear. Okay. A player under Alford performed what is described as unwanted sex acts on an on a female student, mm -hmm. held her down, held his hand over her mouth while mm -hmm. she tried to scream, mm -hmm. and Alford covered it up. Mm -hmm. And he covered it up. Talk about the nature of the cover up because that's part of it as well. He brought in a group that's he brought mm -hmm. in he brought in a Christian group. Mm -hmm. in, they invited the girl in for a prayer session, and then that group pressured her to drop the charges, not to report it mm -hmm. for the good of the team. Mm -hmm. It was despicable. It was disgusting. Um, I was horrified. I'm horrified now as I think about it and as I talk about it. And um, I am glad that it has finally come out. But here's my question to you, yeah. madam. Yes. All that was known when he was hired here. Yeah. Uh, yes, it was. You know, yes, and it, it was. Just, and I am dismayed. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I am dismayed. Mm -hmm. that, that to me brings up sort of this larger point about uh, sort of a media critique of the media landscape yeah. in this town and around the university and why wasn't he, why wasn't that part of his vetting process and why wasn't that discussion raised? And it's not like it was a distant memory in his tenure at Iowa. Sure. I mean, it was it, it was happened. close on the heels of when he was Well reported, a lot of details. Absolutely. There was a report from the there university. There were student protests. That, right. Um, no, memories are short. I mean, yeah. this is, the, the truth is Especially memories are short. But uh, mm -hmm. it is, um, it is interesting that it is coming back out now. I credit the journalists who have uncovered it as he moves to UCLA. Mm -hmm. And I think with some of the problems that we had with our football program here at UNM, I, I would like to believe that that would not happen in a hiring situation into UNM again. I'm glad you brought that up because here's part of the overall picture about UNM and sports and all that. We're joking a little bit ago, poor Paul Krebs. He can't keep a hire, it seems like, the past few years. And, you know, Rob, does this, does this affect how the public views high-level coaches at big money? Because there was a lot of money on the table for Steve Alford, mm -hmm. a ton of dough. Mm -hmm. And I remember getting a lot of grief on this program from this seat when he was hired, calling him an itiner do we really need an another itinerant mm. college coach just blowing through? But people were so bought into the Steve Alford thing. Well, I was getting stopped in the street and saying, nah, 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 you know. All coaches in major sure. programs are itinerant. Mm -hmm. And he, he didn't break any, any laws. He didn't break the contract by leaving to go to UCLA. There was an out in his contract so he could sure. go, provided sure. that whether it's a million dollars or $150,000. Right. Um, what I find, one of the inter interesting things I find about this was a week ago when he was still the UNM coach, there were a lot of UNM people who were grumbling about right. He's a crummy coach. That's we right. lost to Harvard. That's right. And then he ends up leaving. That's right. And then people are shocked and dismayed that he's leaving. Well, you know, that's... <laughs> but that's, he didn't leave because he was right. getting criticism for his team. I mean, he left no. because of his own career move and he because of and sure. the financials. Well, and, but so, you, can't, you can't blame yeah. someone for leaving 
to, to take a better job. I mean, no. if you're if you're an attorney right. and someone offers you a job in Los Angeles, you're going to say, no, no, I'm going to stay in Albuquerque. But right. you can't just, you can't be upset one. if people criticize you for the decision either. I mean, that, it's like that, he that, he right. didn't do anything wrong. You break the contract, but I think the community is reacting in a healthy way towards the way that it happened. I mean, they were starting right. to really love this program. That's right. The number of people that were looking at doing season tickets that hadn't done in the past at our business, we were talking about it. But the core of this you know? team's coming back. They've got an assistant so, coach. Yeah who knows the program inside and out. Paul Krebs could end up smelling really good at the end of this thing mm -hmm. if UNM wins yeah. another conference championship and beats a non-Ivy League school team <laughs> in the first round of the NCAA tournament next right. year. And play exactly. That's where it all comes down. It's all, it, yeah. it's all results oriented. Mm -hmm. It's a good point. That in big time sports does work that way. You can figure up a lot of things, a lot of indiscretions. I'm not saying that's right or wrong, Whitney, but that does happen. So I have to ask again, it's our last question on this. Are we different as a community, a basketball community, because of this? Or is this just part of what happens in big-time college sports? I, For some reason, I just think there was a lot more attention on basketball this year. I mean, both not negative and positive. There was a lot more interest around in our office in terms of, you know, looking, you know, watching right. the tournament and everything. And I think it's great for the sport in general. Right. So I think, as it, you know, as more people start to watch it, it becomes a bigger deal. You're going to have these things. Right. It was yeah. also perfect, wasn't it? We had the new building. Mm -hmm. We had a new coach. Yeah. We had a hot team. Yeah. And then it all just went, God, amazing. It's going to be Fine, it, thank you. <laughs> thank you. I see, I need to hear those things. I need to hear that. We'll be back with Whitney and her good, comforting words here in just a second.